Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. A while ago, you guys asked a lot of questions to the devs. I collected all of these questions, I passed them on, and the devs have answered. So, um, with this background video running of the Russian fleet, or at least a Russian fleet, engaging a Japanese battle group, let's have a look at the questions. Um, they are in no particular order, so it's going to be a bit haphazard. Um, apologies for that. There were a lot of questions. Now, I'm going to be doing this in a sort of uh, pose the question, give their answer, and then give my feedback to that answer. So this could make for a fairly long video. The video will also have chapters, so you can easily skip to or skip from answers or questions that you are interested in getting answers to. Let's go. Um, regarding ship design, will designing transports ever be added back into the game? Transports will continue to be auto-generated randomly according to campaign battles. Transports were never supposed to be allowed for a design as this function would not add something in the campaign. That's their answer. Um, I think designing transports would very much be interesting when you're playing a campaign. Especially if you're able to build, I believe they're called Q-ships, transports which are in fact armed and not equipped with a lot of cargo. This would allow you to create ambushes for enemy convoys, or at least for enemy convoy raiders, that is. Because you'd suddenly be able to start getting, um, let's say, a shot back at the raider with a torpedo or a four-inch gun. Next question. Will we ever see a buildable and playable submarine? Submarines are planned to enter the gameplay in the next major update, which is 1.09. They are going to be buildable and manageable, but will not participate in 3D battles. They will be able to hurt transports and warships in auto-resolved engagements, according to many strategic and technological variables, and their position in the map. Okay, so there are quite a few things that I'm not exactly sure about what they mean. Um, I don't particularly like auto-resolve in this game, because it tends to screw over the player. The player can generally command fleets a lot better than the AI can. So I'm not particularly happy about seeing the AI, um, if you will, auto-resolve something like this. I think this is... Well, I understand their choice for not having it in a 3D battle. I am not particularly happy with the auto-resolve. And also the term that says uh, it'll be resolved according to many strategic and technological variables. I imagine that you can research uh, better ASW tech, which will impact the map. You might be able to research uh, better, I don't know, snorkels for submarines, if you will, so that they can be submerged longer or uh, recharge the batteries while submerged. Something like that, I'm not sure. Next question, will we ever see anti-shipping aviation, either naval or shore-based? No, we do not consider adding aircraft carriers in the game. It's one of the most asked questions. Uh, maybe later we can include them in a new game or as an add-on. So there's an initial no here, but they're still opening a window, if you will. I wouldn't call it the door, but definitely a window that says, well, maybe later we can include them in a new game, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts 2, um, or as an add-on. I think people would be interested in having it as an add-on, so you can easily add it off, if you will, if you don't like aircraft carriers. Uh, will you add low-caliber automatic guns, and as analogous to AAA? We already provide the ability to have 1.1-inch guns, and no smaller guns will be offered. Okay, um, quality of life question about the designer. Are there any plans for an undo last action button in the shipbuilder slash shipyard? It says we will try to add an undo feature in a future update. I think that'd be very valuable. Uh, frequently, I'm in a design and I go, nah, it's not quite what I wanted. Uh, Control Z would be nice to have. Currently, when you select a reloading system for your guns, that system is used for all the guns on a ship. Are there any plans to introduce the option of having different reloading systems for a ship's primary or secondary battery? And the answer is, we will see how other priorities will develop and we will try to implement this too. It is something that is feasible to do. Probably an update 1.1. Um, I'm not exactly sure how long they're going to be working on 1.09. Um, they might have 1.09.1, 1.2.3, etc. So it could be a while before we see version 1.1. How will players be able to share their ship designs? 
The idea is to create separate sh uh, safe files for each ship in a special game environment. And these files could be shared among players to use in custom battles or as campaign templates. That'd be interesting. The plan is to introduce this feature in update 1.1. I would be particularly happy about this as a content creator because that means that you guys can send me your ships and I'll be able to use them in the campaign. Uh, that's going to probably be a while. I imagine it's going to take some time before we actually will be able to do this. And by some time, I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be half a year to a year from now. Um, will we be able to adjust the height of barbettes and place them where we want on the sides? There is currently no plan to make such a feature, although it is feasible to do. We must finish other more important aspects. So um, short answer, no. Longer answer, they have different priorities. Next question. Since metallurgy and advances in forging and winding were such important factors in increasing gun barrel length during this period, are there any plans for, for adding technological advances for gradually increasing barrel length? Or will the game continue to allow players to extend barrel length to an absurdly long ratings that are cutting edge even today? They say it's a good idea of players which we can implement in patch 1.1 or later. Now, um... As a bit of an aside, I know the devs are very busy. They always are. We as players can always come up with a ton of features that we would love to see. And they're going to have to be the ones that pick and choose. That is not strictly up to us as players. So this means that uh, we might like to see a feature. And we might think it's a really high priority. The devs might disagree. Probably will disagree. And will choose to do something else. Uh, we will have to respect that, and so be it. What I do imagine helps is if you voice your uh, requests in a civil manner on their forums. And perhaps the more often or the more extended your plan is, the, um, the better your chances of having them implemented into the game. But keep in mind, it's not great to ask this in an entitled way. Just be civil about it, guys. I know you can do that. Campaign questions. Will there ever be options to conquer provinces or dissolved countries and to refit ships that you've captured? So it's two different questions and they do go into detail about both. Conquering provinces and refitting ships are two entirely different things. After adding all the nations and the full global map, we will consider adding more complex aspects of conquering other provinces. But first we must add, we must add the planned minor nations. I'm not sure what they're referring to. The dissolved major nations can become a mixture of minor nations, which will be handled with the same logic. There's a lot to unpack here. Um, they only go into the option of conquering provinces, of dissolved... Uh, well, uh, let's say conquering provinces of dissolved countries. That's what I'm taking away from this. Because... They say that after adding the nations on the global map, we will consider adding more complex aspects of conquering other provinces, but we must first add the planned minor nations. Which are those? Would be my follow-up question. Because we currently in the campaign have France, Germany, Britain, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. Which minor nation would they add? How would that take shape? I don't know. That would be very interesting. Um, no answer to, are you able to refit ships that you've captured? That is the second part. The captured ships that, for now, cannot be refitted can be fixed later. We may manage to do so in the upcoming patch, but this should be a minor concern for players. So this is something that they're not going to be doing um, just yet. It is nice to be able to capture a ship in the sense that um, you have taken it, I believe, well... No, sorry, I misunderstand. Um, what I'm interpreting this as the captured ships is the one that you claim as victory prizes when you end a war. They mean the captured ships that have surrendered into the battle, I believe. I think that's what they're talking about. So, um, if you are able to capture a ship, they cannot be refitted, they cannot be fixed, they cannot be repaired. Something like that is going to be potentially added later. Will you implement an encounter size? Most PCs can't handle battles over 100 ships. That's the question. Um, note to that. It is not currently PCs that are running the problem. It is the game. 
The game is not suited for running large battles because it seems to be running on a single core, a single CPU core. I have a pretty powerful system. Mine generally doesn't run very many games with difficulty. It does not run Dreadnoughts with difficulty. It's the game that's the problem. Anyway, the question, will we have an implement an encounter limit in uh, campaigns? It says, these. it appears that these enormous encounters are more possible in higher difficulty levels of the campaign. Already, the economy has become stricter and these battles should happen more rarely. In the next update, we shall limit the task force sizes via technology. That's interesting. Um... I'm thinking something like the Stellaris limit, where you need to research um, a certain naval doctrine, I think it is, so that you can have a bigger command limit. Stellaris works in a way where you have, let's say, a command limit of 50 points. Uh, a battleship would weigh more in points than a destroyer, so you can have a massive fleet of destroyers or a few battleships. Um, they, they might go with something like that. Um... If the United States and Japan are added, how will UAD work around the Pacific and Atlantic theaters being so far apart? Now, here's the good news. USA and Japan will be added in the next update, as all the planned major nations. The fleets will need several turns to move through the huge map, so the strategic aspect of controlling colonies and distant ports will be very important. Task forces will be the only way to create an invasion force against each other. So, um, right now, you don't really need range when you're playing around with the campaign. Because the European theater is really not that big. I think you can get away with using minimum range on almost all the ships. That's going to change. You're going to need to go with more range if you want to be able to, for example, as Britain, reach all your colonies once the global map comes out. Which I think is really good. And the fact that we're going to see both the USA and Japan added in the next update, as well as all the other plant major nations, uh, Russia, China, I think this is going to make... Oh, and Spain. I'm not sure if they consider Spain a major or minor nation. But Spain currently isn't implemented, so I suspect it's going to be coming as well. Um, will there be greater customization to the campaign? What I mean is a wider selection of start dates, maybe five years apart rather than ten. Choose an end date and uh, or ability to set a 20-year campaign rather than playing all the way into 1950s and maybe starting alliances. So basically, can we get more customization when setting up a campaign? The historic, uh, sorry, the current availability years will stay. We need to add starting provinces for each different year according to historical facts. Nothing else is planned. So in short, no. Will there be a meaningful diplomatic screen with its own options to perform not uh, to perform, and not only these random choices? The random choices that I think this question refers to is where you get the sudden pop-up that says, hey, event X has happened, how would you like to reply? How would you like to take this on? Yes, it is planned to add some special choices which will have a cost in money, unrest, etc. And this will be an effort of the player to influence further the government to initiate an action which will affect relations and other aspects of gameplay. Something like the current events, but will be a uh, but will be a choice of the player with a specific chance to succeed. Keep in mind, when, for example, you get the option that says uh, the enemy is uh, proposing a peace treaty, would you like to accept or fight to the end? You are not the government in this game. You are an admiral. You can advise the government to do either, either A or B, to either accept or to continue fighting. But it is ultimately up to the government, which is, let's say, an AI, to go, okay, um, yes, we're going to do that, or no, we are not. You do not have the final say, because you're not the government. Keep that in mind. Um, will there be information at what point a truce or peace is considered in a war? Ties nicely into the previous question. A peace treaty becomes considered after various logical conditions which are calculated each turn. If I understood your question correctly, you ask if we are going to show some kind of information that will help to know when this can happen. The answer is no, because it cannot be accurate. For example, we can play a battle and sink so many sh enemy ships that will immediately trigger a peace treaty event, overriding any previous calculations. Um, a bit of a roundabout way of 
saying, um, no, you're not going to get the information. There is apparently a logic, a formula, a system that calculates whether or not there's going to be a piece. And as a player, we will simply not know. But from what we have seen in the campaign so far, my interpretation is that if you sink a ton of ships and you don't lose a lot, so you gain a massive amount of victory points, the AI on the enemy side generally goes, oh shit, we're going to surrender. And you can pretty decently accept that. Next, when locations like the Suez Canal are added on the map, will we be able to use it or will it just be sea lanes that we can use? Now, this I found to be a very interesting question. Canals and straits, when added, should belong to a specific province and the owner of this province will have the ability to use it during the war. They should, place a, they should be a place of special conflict between rivals so that their fleet can pass through. Additionally, these special places on the map should offer a significant economic bonus during peacetime. So an area like the Suez Canal and similarly the Panama Canal can prove to be extremely valuable to have. And once they are actually implementing a system where you can conquer territories, conquering the territory neighboring one of these straits could be a very decisive factor in whether or not you have a chance to win a campaign. When nations like America and Japan, uh, sorry, with nations like America and Japan having in real life economic issues at various points throughout the game's timeline, uh, will starting at one of these points Hold on, the question is not properly phrased. Um, will starting at one of these points, let's say the 1920s stock market crash, affect the country's starting economy, or will they be based on a more generic look? They say, there is a planned feature to add speculative historical events which could happen if certain prerequisites are met. Right. So there's a planned feature, is the first part of the answer. So they're not currently implementing it, but they're planning on fixing it. To add speculative historical events, so I suppose you could have a stock market crash or, I don't know, some industrial drought or maybe an industrial boom, um, which could happen if certain prerequisites are met. That seems to indicate to me that they haven't really planned much about this feature. There is a planned feature, sure, but it looks like they really haven't given it that much thought yet. Is there going to be an intelligence slash espionage system where instead of the game telling you where ships are, you have to fund intelligence services to know which ships are going to be, uh, which ships are going where, plus potentially steal technology? It could also be used for intrigue, such as eliminating an, admi an enemy admiral to change the AI personality. Currently, everything is known for the players because it helps to debug and understand problems of the campaign. Because keep in mind, Dreadnoughts is still in early access. It is planned to have an intelligence system which will limit the information of enemy fleets, ship designs, and other aspects. The system is, though, not possible to consider until we finalize the necessary campaign aspects. So, um, I think it would be very interesting because right now, if you click on any enemy ship, even if you haven't identified them, you can immediately see what sort of armament they have, how far they can shoot, whether they have torpedoes or not. You can learn a lot about them. You can even see what their pen chance is, which even tells you something about their ability to, uh, or about their type of ammunition. That's a lot of intel, and I understand they need it for debugging, but of course, you wouldn't be able to do this in war. You'd be able to look at a battleship and maybe estimate the size of the guns, for example. You wouldn't instantly know what sort of propellant they use, what sort of pen they have. Um, all these things that we can see, like on the Ise over here, the, the window on the left-hand side, you wouldn't be able to see that. And I think that that should be concealed, but they're currently not working on it. Can dissolved countries come back after 10 years? They say it's related to the question answered above. Depending on the final province slash major and minor nation mechanic, we can create a condition where previously dissolved nations can reunite. Now, in the campaign that I just completed, which was the Germany Big Guns campaign, uh, France, sorry, France fall apart and the entire French provinces group on the map just sort of ceased to be anything. They all they just kind of sat there. And this is what the, uh, the, the question wants to know or whether the, the questioner wants to know. Can these things come back? And the answer is yes. 
eventually, but right now, not so likely. Will there ever be a PvP campaign with each player being a country? Sadly, um, they do not currently consider a hot seat or any other sort of multiplayer campaign. Uh, unfortunate. I would have loved to kick Brother Monroe's ass and make a sort of multi-channel campaign. Sadly, uh, not that likely to work. At least they're not implementing it, but the moment that they start implementing the ability to share uh, ship designs, I suppose we have some options. Will the AI in campaign use player design ships, for example, off of Steam Workshop? It is a considered feature from the start of developing this game, to utilize saved designs for sharing between players and as templates, which the auto design system can use either as is or as refits. We haven't done this yet because we would have to break the saves so many times during development that would make players unhappy. As we reach finalization of the ship design mechanics, we will develop it, probably, as said above, in the planned update 1.1 or later. So, yes, it is going to be happening, and I would very much appreciate it if the AI does go for uh, ship designs that we can download, if you will, from the Steam Workshop. It's something that's going to come in a while, um, later, trademark. Could be at any point, but I again suspect it's going to be a few months, if not more. Will we eventually be able to have save slots for campaigns so we can play multiple campaigns without having to erase everything? This is definitely also a pet peeve of mine as a content creator because I cannot play any other campaign without removing my own or going into the uh, basically the app save files and copying the save and then putting it back. It's, it's a bit of a hassle. We currently, uh, sorry, yes, multiple campaign slots will, of course, become available. Actually, it's prioritized for the next major update, which is 1.0.9. Oh, sorry, 1.09. It was not available so far because it would not help the early development of the game and its testing environment. Again, highlighting that we are still in a testing phase of the game. Mines are labeled as a work in progress. How are they going to work? Mines will be deployable from destroyers or light cruisers when stationed in ports. In order to do so, special mine components must be added to the ships, which will only function in the campaign. A defensive minefield radius around ports will be generated and will grow depending on technology and the amount of ships which will function as mine layers each turn. I can't wait to test this shit out. <laughs> um... I already imagine campaigns where you have 50 destroyers sitting, I don't know, in the, let's say you, you're Austria-Hungary. You have so few ports, you have so little space to defend, that if you just plunk down 50 destroyers with mine laying capability, you could mine the whole Adriatic Sea. Which I think would be hilarious, and I would love to try and break the game so that we can hone the mechanic a bit further by the time that it becomes available. So, something like that is going to be interesting. Anyway, um, the question continue or the answer continues every ship that enters a minefield will have a chance to be hit by a mine with much less chance to be hit by a friendly mine keep in mind this is a thing you can get hit by a friendly mine no mine is ever friendly the main countermeasure against enemy mines will be the mine sweeping technology that will be automatically functioning uh, for task forces in a radius according to the size of the fleet and all their technologies researched simulating small minesweeper ships that escort the fleets. Minefields can be progressively cleaned up so that the approaching enemy ports will become less hazardous. Additionally, there will be some extra technology which will enhance the power of mines or the defense against them, with some special mine submarines can deploy mines in deep sea water and harm nearby fleets without engaging them. After a war, mines will be progressively cleaned up. So again, yes, this is going to be a very, very interesting mechanic to use. Could be an annoying one to use as well. I think it is going to um, benefit smaller nations because they might not have the capacity to go head to head with an enemy battle cruiser. But if the battle cruiser is very eager to engage and tries to do a port strike, it might run into a mine. At which point, even a small nation can damage a really big ship. Next, um, will there be a feature of a simulated war? 
So that, for example, a war between Germany and France that, depending on the GDP Germany has, captures naval bases in Normandy without winning the war. They say, nope, we do not consider anything like that. So it's not like you simply have uh, an invasion fleet or something like that to capture enemy ports. Will it be possible to expand port capacity? They say port capacity already grows according to GDP growth. We do not plan to make it more complex. However, we want to make port capacity to affect shipyard limits so that the amount of ships that can be constructed is not unlimited as of now. Again, very interesting. Currently in the game, uh, I'm talking 1.08.9, you can actually get um, an infinite number of ships produced at the same time. This means that um, if you want to order, I don't know, 50, 150,000 ton battleships, you can. Which is, of course, ludicrous, because there might be one shipyard in the country that could build a ship like that. Unless you have heavily invested in your infrastructure and you actually have two, maybe three. If you have a mechanic like this, where you're going to be having shipyard limits, you cannot simply crank out a bunch of ships instantly. I think this would be a very much welcome quality of life upgrade for the campaign. Um, will there be an overhaul to the surrender mechanic? And if so, what will it eventually look like? He says, I think there is no need to make something more complex than what already works. Um, yes, I'm not sure if it already works very well. Because if I'm reading between the lines of the question, then I'm hearing some dissatisfaction with when a ship surrenders. It essentially is dead. It cannot be captured. It cannot be recaptured by the, the, the party that lost it. So let's say um, the Akotsushima takes 45% crew loss. The ship is considered lost. The ship surrenders. It's not like you can recover the ship later by sending another ship next to it and recrewing it. It's not, it's not a feature, sadly. I would very much like to see that. And the devs are saying, I don't think there is a need to make something more complex than what already works. I disagree. I don't think it already works. I think it can be vastly improved. Um, will there be a way to use other countries' technologies, such as the hull, uh, the hull design, tower design, etc.? Funnel design as well, if you perform actions such as taking them over or make an espionage system. Uh, sadly, not something that they are considering right now. Are choke points like Gibraltar, uh, the Suez Canal and Panama are going to be armed in a world-long campaign? He says, I'm not sure what you mean by armed, but as I replied above, channels and straits will be strategically important. Will we be able to design torpedo boats beyond 1907? We may allow some special small destroyers for some nations. For example, the Japanese fleet had considerable numbers of small ships designed as torpedo boats, which served as an escort of ships during World War II. I would very much personally love it if they added a mechanic where you could build uh, PT boats, so torpedo boats in 19, I don't know, 1935, 1940. Just give them minimal range. Don't make it so that these things can do 10,000 kilometers because they're, well, they might be going out to sea every once in a while, but life aboard them probably wouldn't be very comfortable if they are that seaworthy at all. Just make them a sort of last ditch port defense ship. What are the plans regarding giving the AI the ability to build ships better suited to beat player ships in the campaign? The average AI ship design usually contains all the necessary historical aspects for offense and defense, and it is designed fast with the press of a button. We will make further changes according to player feedback. As the campaign becomes complete with all technologies available, players will realize that old exploits will not work such as building too many battleships without destroyer escort, because these will simply become easy prey against submarines. Hmm. The average AI ship design usually works, containing all the necessary historical aspects for offense and defense. No. I disagree. I've seen a lot of weird ship designs. Um, let's see if we can find an example in this battle. Yeah. Battleship Perezvet. Does this have all the necessary ingredients to for offense and defense? Offense? Yes. 
i.e. it has a fuck ton of guns. Does it have all the required ingredients for defense? No, it has no superstructure armor. That's... no. This is 19... I don't know where to put it to, 1925. It does have anti-torp 4, barbette 4, crypt 4, electro-hydraulic 2 steering, triple hull bottom even. Um, yes, it's fairly well protected. But I have seen the AI come up with so many weird-ass designs that I still think there is a lot of room for the AI designer to be improved. They have made serious leaps with it. Yes, absolutely. There is still room for improvement. I have seen, especially in the Dreadnoughts campaign, uh, the Big Guns campaign, that is, some um, some interesting designs. Let's put it that way. Now, will uh, can you explain how peace treaties work? Sometimes you select fight to the end and you get peace and vice versa. The peace treaty event may occur according to several conditions checked and can be accepted only by the government. The player can only influence the results, increase the chance of a positive or negative answer. We need to add some kind of warning text to clarify this matter, simply. So you can throw in your weight as the Admiral, and you can say, you know what, um, with the current conditions, I think going to peace would be favorable, or no, um, going to peace now is a mistake. But it's not your decision, ultimately. It's the government's, like I mentioned before. So it's not like you're going to be able to do... Um, or you're gonna, not going to be able to force the AI's hand, or the government's hand. Will wars include land combat? Interesting. There is a plan to add land conquest in an abstract way. Utilizing the nation's population, which will produce a large land army, and its ability to fight, dependent on active blockades and GDP. The latter, as we know already, will greatly are greatly related by naval power of each nation, so the fleets will influence the land army's power. We will share more info on this a bit later, because it is currently an idea, not yet verified. Now, you can do all sorts of theory crafting on this. I think it's not necessarily a feature that they're going to be implementing soon. Um, it's an interesting idea, to be sure. I just don't think it's a priority right now, personally. Generally... General questions, that is. What can the community do to make your lives easier? Now, I think this is a very nicely phrased, uh, phrased question. The community can continue to share valuable feedback in our forums in a civilized manner. So far, it has helped greatly to develop features that player wanted and we wanted, or, and we made to satisfy them. So as you can see, the devs are listening. They are reading the forums. I know that Nick, the lead developer, is very active on the forums. So pose your suggestions there. Um, as much as I love to see your comments with suggestions on my videos, I am not the forums, um, nor do I believe that the devs read every single comment on my videos. It would be uh, not a very effective use of their time. So again, if you have a great idea for Dreadnoughts, post it on their forums. I'll link that in the description. Will you add a colorblind mode? I personally struggle with this in the ship designer. This was my question. I'm really not sure what can be done about it. We need to check what is possible. We will add it eventually. Yes. Um, what is possible to do about it? Let me show you. If I design a ship, you got this, uh, I don't know, main tower here. Boom. I want to have a 12-incher there. What I, as a colorblind person, need is for this uh, this barred field just behind the turret towards the tower to be made more clear. Because I believe the turret will turn now. Now it will not. And now, I'm not sure. This is the, Yeah, this indicates it's a 360 turret. I just need these to be more clear, these differences. For me, the, and this might be difficult for you to imagine as probably a color-seeing person, if you will, for me, the contrast or the, the difference between the uh, the full blown color, the 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 yeah, I don't know how to put that. Uh, let's say the area where the turret can rotate and the rest is too small. It's difficult for me to see, which leads me as a colorblind person to make bad ship designs. So what I need them to do is make that difference bigger, make it like red and black or some colors which are not or which are very far removed from each other. Um. Are there considerations for nation-limited techs or buffs? When the campaign becomes fully finished, we can add some special features for each nation, easily. 
although nations are already quite diverse according to their special holes, their land possessions, and their initial GDP. Yes, I agree. Um, Germany, for example, has some very distinct holes. So do the, the, um, the Japanese, of course. The Russians... I'm not particularly impressed with the Russian ships. They feel a bit generic. I think they can still add a lot more different hulls, and I really would love it if you get, for example, the Japanese maybe as the only nation to have uh, oxygen fuel torpedoes, something like that. When will we get a more? When will we get more playable nations? In the next update, 1.09, we will offer all the major nations. Excellent. Will we get a pre-battle planner so we can set our divisions and formations each time we go into battle? This is a popular player request. We will see what we can do about it in the next updates. I would very much appreciate if they do that. Uh, building or managing a larger fleet, even though they said that in the campaign that's not as likely because of, uh, for example, task force limits. Even though it's not as likely, I still want to be able to deploy where my battleship is, uh, where my escorts are. For example, I want to have a heavy cruiser on the left and on the right. I want to have a battle cruiser in front. I want to have a destroyer screen around it. I don't want to have to unfuck this mess that is currently happening every time that you click start battle. If you have more than four ships, it could pretty easily become a mess. And I really hope that they fix that. Again, it's a very popular player request, and as far as I'm concerned, it's a priority, and it should have been in the game already. Will there ever be spotter planes? I'm not thinking about air-to-air -air or air-to-surface combat, just a spotter plane. No, we do not consider this for the final game. So, no planes. Can you explain the penetration mechanic? Why does a shell with 30 inches of pen only partially pen 2.5 inches of armor? I would be able to answer this question if I had an image showing what the exact battle conditions are at that moment. Penetration is evaluated by several factors such as the type of hit, is it a side hit or a deck hit or a part hit, horizontal and vertical angle of the hit, distance from which the shell was fired, the shell's terminal velocity, the internal layers of the target and, so many, and many others that simulate realistic conditions. In general, there can be a confusion if players read only the penetration data, which uh, show the maximum penetration at a specific distance. But this penetration can be modified extensively by many battle factors, which the game explains further when the target becomes identified. And you can apply it on, uh, and you can apply on it the penetration estimator window. So um, stuff like having your ship uh, face the enemy head on generally gives this angled bow situation where um, you're not shooting at a nice flat piece of hull, you're shooting at an angled piece, which means your armor increases vastly. If um, the devs would implement something such as what War Thunder has, where you click a button and you can see, okay, if I fire, uh, an, I don't know, an 18-inch shell at this target at this angle, will it pen? If I fire a 4-inch shell at the superstructure at this angle, will it pen? Something like that I think would be very, very valuable. Um, it also has a lot of different variables because your guns can fire anything from semi-ballistic to capitalistic. All of these have different ricochet chances, uh, pens, fuse times. You got standard shells, light shells, super heavy shells. You got different propellants. You got different, uh, sorry, different charges, different propellants. You got a lot of different factors. I still think having that War Thunder-esque situation would be very welcome because it means it um, illustrates to players an, uh, an ability, a way to learn whether your ship is properly armored or not. Let's see, we're almost to the end. Will there be a multiplayer mode? We haven't decided yet if we will add a battle multiplayer mode. So campaign, no. Battle multiplayer mode, haven't decided. It's not a no. Will you implement custom paint schemes such as camouflage for ships? It is a feasible feature that will require a lot of modeling and design work to function properly. I believe we can try to offer this feature only after the full release of the game. So it is going to be something that they're working on but for the very, very long term. Are there any plans to have random landmasses in battles like islands and coasts? 
we need to decide how we will improve this aspect of the game. After offering a full final global map and it's all its core features are done. So again, it's not a no. Um, they seem to be considering it. And I think it would make for uh, interesting options. Because if, for example, there are shallows where battleships cannot go, that suddenly limits your ability to just have your battleship go wherever the hell it pleases, like it currently does. You might have a shallow where your destroyers can pass, circum or circle around an island, and then come at the battleship from an unexpected angle. Also, hopefully being blocked from line of sight, because they are behind an island. Uh, I'm discarding World of Warships magical radar in this case. I think having land masses would definitely make battles a lot more interesting. Will the smoke interference mechanic be reworked? Smoke interference should be affected by wind rather than a flat penalty from funnels. That would give the player incentive to maneuver to minimize smoke interference and or maximize it for the enemy. The Germans did this at the Battle of Coronel in World War I to increase their accuracy. The answer is we already use an extra smoke accuracy modifier which uses the angle of the ship. It is pending uh, to unify the logic and make smoke interference a value that will work with more consistency in combat. So they already use it um, and they are working on implementing a better system. Will there be a system for assigning ships specific tasks or preferred targets? For example, you build a fast long range heavy cruiser to fight transports and their escorts of DDs and CLs. With long range, you should get favorable battles and see what... Uh, but what does the game see as favorable battle? Does that mean light cruiser versus DD? What if you build a torpedo light cruiser versus a battleship? For a light cruiser, there's a favorable battle against the battleship, but it's not against a bunch of destroyers. That was the part of the question. Answer. In the next update, we will offer new technologies which will affect the generated missions. Okay, I'm very interested to see what they're planning. Nations that do not research this technology sector will have difficulties finding opportunities to attack convoys or execute surprise strikes and port attacks. So it becomes a naval doctrine tree, perhaps? Something like that? Final question. Will fire groups be implemented at any point? Things like having two primaries engage different targets. What is considered is to improvise, just to improve the fire control system so that it can allow secondaries to fire in independent mode if that is needed. For example, if a battleship has only one group of 5 inch secondaries, then it should be able to fire at enemies found in both left and right of the ship. Yes. Um, currently, if you have a ship which has, I don't know, in this case it has a, a row of 4 inch secondaries, your starboard side will engage. This, I don't know, the, the barn on the right. The barn on the left is perfectly safe because the guns cannot fire at it. The ship can only engage one target at a time. They don't fully answer the question here because the question was for primaries. They don't answer it about primaries, but for secondaries, yes. Apparently secondaries can be detached, so you can have a fire group on the port and fire group on the starboard and have them engage different targets. Which would make for some epic warfare as you make a secondary-based brawler, so relatively small main guns and just a fuck ton of secondaries, and you sail right into an enemy division. And good luck, because you're going to be blazing left and right. It's going to make for some really, really nice battles. Those were all the questions. And those were all the answers. Now, there were probably questions that haven't been asked um, or have been answered in the previous Q&A, which is also linked down below. Be sure to check that out. I might be doing another Q&A like this in a couple of months. We'll just have to see how it goes. Many thanks to the devs for answering all the questions that you guys have sent in. I hope you have learned a bunch more about the game. And, um, well, let's see how it goes. Let's try to support the devs with good ideas, post those in the forums, and just continue helping them make the best of the game. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for your watching. Thank you for listening. And I'll see you soon for more videos.